Hi, a lot of people have wanted me to do a video on etching your own PCBs and maybe I'll do that one day because I used to do that a lot. I used to make a lot of my own boards both personally and actually professionally back in the day, back when they cost a fortune or when you needed them like really quickly, within an hour or two, you just had to spin a board. So you just etch it uh, and expose it, etch it yourself using various techniques. I used to use the positive uh, pre-sensitized photo resist PCBs and then a photocopy onto a transparency overlay and I used to do really decent bores e easily down to 8 thou, 8 thou double sided I could churn them around in an hour or two no worries whatsoever and uh, traditionally you would um, etch these using ferric chloride and uh, Mrs. E V blogs actually a geochemist she, she's done research on water quality and water pollution and you know all sorts of stuff and she's worked in the industry so we we're talking about the other day and uh, we got to discuss discussing ferric chloride which is one of the etchant materials used to remove the copper strip the copper from the PCB there's better ones these days but uh, ferric chloride is your traditional method it's been used for I don't know 100 years or something then it, uh, I remembered that they actually put ferric chloride into the drinking water and Mrs. E. Vlog confirmed this um, and sure enough New South Wales Government Department drinking water ferric chloride what chemicals are used the chemicals are used as part of the filtration treatment process such as loom and ferric chloride are reduced to very low levels before leaving the treatment plant very low levels but they're actually not zero and if you go to this this is a US uh, American chemistry thing or something a ferric chloride uses in the United States wastewater treatment 60% drinking water treatment so 20% of ferric chloride in the US is used to uh, actually treat drinking water so the reason they use ferric chloride is because it's actually what's called a flocculate which helps uh, bind it's a binding agent that helps bind all the dirt and crap and you know other stuff in the water so then it's it's larger and then it can be more easily physically filtered out but some of that ferric chloride gets through into your drinking water but they actually have uh, health limits for how much you know ferric chloride can actually be in the drinking water it's fascinating and there's emergency do not consume do not use concentrations for ferric chloride in drinking water all that sort of stuff so there is ferric chloride in your water so that got me thinking can you actually use water to etch your PCBs I know it's ridiculously diluted I couldn't really there's water analysis stuff here for Sydney water this is my local water which comes from the local reservoir um, it, ferric chloride is also known as iron chloride it's the same thing iron ferrite so I thought can we actually maybe use the water to etch PCBs now obviously it's going to be ridiculously diluted but if we can somehow concentrate the water maybe it's possible so there you go and there's drinking water uh, reports as well you can get these for your local reservoir and you know they've got all sorts of stuff in them and there's residual amounts of iron and chloride and all the stuff so I thought we'd give it a go and this may completely <laughs> come a guts so it may not work at all in which case you probably won't see this video on the second channel anyway let's have a go all right so let's try and etch a PCB here please excuse the crudity of the model I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it um, I don't have any of my PCB manufacturing equipment anymore I used to do this all the time donkeys years ago but now it's just it's just cheaper and, and much higher quality to just get the boards uh, manufactured outside but of course um, making your own PCBs is still a thing if you need it like within an hour so I'm going to do it today with a bit of Veriborg because I don't have any positive photo resist so a vera board will work fine just a uh, little pro tip on you can see how it's oxidized on one side copper etches very poorly when it's oxidized like that it's actually a a resistant coating in its own right so i've just used some steel wool to uh uh, just expose some of that and what I'm going to do you can actually get special uh, PCB waterproof uh, permanent markers to actually uh, make boards and you can actually make boards just draw them but I, a sharpie works uh, works just fine so what I'm going to do is just cover every second trace in there like that so we'll etch every alternate trace that will act as a uh, photo resist that you'd normally get on a normal board um, I just got a glass here I'm just going to use uh, tap water but of course the concentrations of the ferric chloride that coming out of your tap are ridiculously small they meet health standards and everything else so we're going to have to actually attempt to concentrate that if we've got any hope 
of actually etching this board. So what I'm going to do is because it's uh, ferric chloride, it's iron, and we should be able to maybe concentrate it with magnets. So I've got these uh, ridiculously strong magnets. So I'll just get one of these and I'll whack it under the glass. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, fill the, is that in the center? I'll fill the glass up and just leave the tap running for like five minutes or something here yeah, it's a waste of water but so it'll bubble and like it'll uh, spill out over the side but then hopefully we'll end up with a concentrated a more well, a more concentrated solution in the bottom so i'm going to give that a go is that yep yeah, it's not going to topple so i'll leave that running for five minutes where are we get that around there there you go hopefully end up with a more concentrated solution and then we'll see if we can etch this or not will it work no idea but it's worth a shot let's go i'll come back i did five minutes i have no idea like i have no feel for any of this so please the uh, keep the magnet there just in case so we can't use that much water, of course. So we're going to have to try not to steal a bit less. I think that'll do it. I think that might do it. Um, yeah, I've got no real feel for how, like, you know, how concentrated this is going to be after five minutes. We might need a heck of a lot more uh, than that. But anyway, the idea now is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, heat up um, this and I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to put it to, uh, well, I've got it set to 75 because um, it, etching, this is like a long time thing, like etching PCBs and stuff, you've always done it at a higher temperature. It just speeds up the uh, process of doing that. So um, uh, hopefully that's the idea. Let's get this bed here and we'll leave it running we might have to leave this running i don't know it could be many many hours it may not simply work at all i i just don't know um it depends on the concentration of the water so if you've got any like uh feel for how long and uh, like uh, you know chemistry knowledge and how long it's uh it's going to take to concentrate the ferric chloride in the water then please let us know because you know we need we need a feel for how long it's going to take. But I, I, like in theory, this is possible. So we'll give it a go anyway. So let's get our glass and uh, we're, we'll whack it on there. All right. And can we see that? Is that covering? Yeah, that's covering all that. All right. So whack that on there and give it a go. All right. 75 degrees celsius and like ordinarily you've got to continually agitate uh the board in there so I, I don't have one of those like things that you put in your fish tank to bubble etch and you know do all that sort of stuff i used to do that uh back in the day but I, as i said don't have any of my gear anymore so we'll give it a go um i'll probably come back like periodically to like give it a stir or whatever but i can't stand here for like however long it's going to take to try and get this working but Anyway, hopefully you can see that. Give that a go. All right, I'll get back to you. I'll go the old time lapse. Oh, hello. I see bubbles. No, it's not on the bottom of the glass. That's there. That's. I think that could be in the bottom of the glass. Interesting. Let's. I can see, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can see some bubbles forming on the surface there. Just, I don't know, too early to tell. Okay, 15 minutes. Ooh, more bubblies, tiny. There's some bubbles on the surface, but there's nothing, nothing amazing happening yet. This may or may not work at all. It's just an experiment, but I can definitely see some bubbles on there from my uh, PCB etching experience. That means it's doing something. Maybe on this side here, I can see some being etched away. 
It's certainly, it would have been done by now. Like if this was ferric chloride, this would be done in five or 10 minutes tops. Five minutes, I think mine used to etch in at an elevated uh, temperature with, you know, the right concentration and with the ferric chloride. So keep going. Hey, what are we up to? 25 minutes? <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Bubbles. Still, I still think some of this side here is... Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's my imagination. More time required to tell, but there's definitely bubbles, like, forming on the surface there, but I can't see any major bits being eaten away yet. Kind of, kind of, sort of. But no, more time. If it is doing anything, it's incredibly dilute, but <laughs> that's what I expected. Okay, 35 minutes now. That's, <laughs> it's getting long, but I didn't expect anything better this thing worked at all oh hello you can see this let me show you I think this is doing something but I think I may not have um, polished the board good enough let's have a look down there you can see some of it has sort of like there's probably might is there still like some oxide coating on there or something but you can see there's some of those traces I think they're starting to be etched away so there's something in that. Let's keep it going. Oh yeah, 45 minutes in and that is working a treat. Let me show you. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Have to get the right light there. Really see that being etched away now. Nice. <laughs> this works. <laughs> Love it. Woohoo! Look at this. Almost an hour later. There ain't much copper left on those traces, the big bulk one down the bottom, of course. That's going to take longer to etch away because it typically etches from like the outside inwards. And so that's a larger amount of copper. So you'd expect that and you see that on typical etching. But this works. <laughs> it actually works. Concentrate. I mean, it's very dilute. We're almost an hour now. This would have been done in five minutes with a proper concentrated ferric chloride. But if you try and concentrate it, in this case using the magnet from there's probably better ways to do it, then you can actually etch your PCBs with water. That is brilliant. I don't necessarily recommend it, but uh, <laughs> it does actually work. This is great. I'll leave it for a few more minutes. Okay, that's one hour, and I think we can call it quits there. I'll show you, in fact, let me, uh, let me wash it. I'll show you up close. Not that there's gonna be much on there. It's not exactly uh, concentrated, but let's have a look. There you have it. Most of the copper etched away. I mean, there's still some here, as I said, it etches from the outside. Inwards, there's a few little dags left on those traces down there, more towards the top. Get my steel wool, rub off the sharpie, and bingo, there is our PCB. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner, etched with water. Well, not just water, I mean, it needs to be concentrated. There's no way that this is gonna work uh, just by like filling up a glass like that with water and just doing it. I do, well, you could try it, but I think, and the magnet seems to have done the trick. Maybe if we left it longer, it would have been more concentrated. I don't know. Um, give it a go yourself and, uh, and see how it goes. Let us know uh, the results 
in the comments down below. But yeah, I, I've had reasonable results with that. As I said before, I would not recommend that as a practical method. That took almost an hour compared to like five or ten minutes tops that you'd get with a concentrated uh, ferric chloride or other uh, solution. But any experienced uh, chemists out there, let us know if there's some other better method to try and concentrate the uh, ferric or iron chloride in the water, please let us know. But that's fantastic. So hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.